papers, uh, the appointments are. Oh, do you have to reappoint them all? Yeah, there's a bunch of appointments. We, can we can we do, do that later. after we do yeah. the bid? Yeah. And we'll do that next. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, next. Okay, so we have here the bid for you to open. We have two bids for manual, and this is because they're doing 189 and right and. We're responsible for the manhole. Right. The manholes have always been covered with pavement. Um, they let us know that they're repaving again. Um, ARPA money is available to be used for wastewater infrastructure. This is considered that. And the DEP has been pressuring for our manholes to get uncovered. Um, that being said, when the bids, when the bid packet first went out, they were hoping to have not have to include paving, but an, an addendum had to happen because we can no longer wait. DOT will be paving sooner than later, so they had to put is an addendum. It, is it for this year? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So this is so, done. Right. The paving will probably happen before the manholes get yeah. dug up. But no. the addendum no. is including the paving that's going to have to happen after. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the, if this was just two. Yep, we went out the for bids. the full 20 or 19 mantle of 24. So okay, 24, 24 and 10. So we needed to have pricing for each in case this one was way over how much we have. And how much do we have? 105,000 ish. Okay, so for contained. the 24, the total is 127,000. For the 10, it's 54,900. And let's see, that is from Land Construction, LLC, John Lund. 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 Yep. Oh, Lund, I said, oh, look like Land. Lund, sorry, Lund Construction. So this one is from Cool. Donovan Construction. The bid for this one is for 24. Who is the work here? Because it's they've got trench pavement on this one. And they have trench pavement on this one. But they don't have trench pavement on this one, so. You probably have to look at this figure before. Because um, the total for uh, one construction. Donovan Construction is is 103,000, but there's a line item for traffic control for locating the dust frame and covered the grade, and then trench pavement. So there's no, I don't. One of them doesn't include trench pavement. Can you kind of tell us what that means? Well, it's going to be as far as put back in. So because when the way you had on the first one that it was going to be done after the fact that it's been cut and then repaved back in after the fact. Okay. Is this, was that actually The trench pavement was included in the first bit in one construction. The trench pavement wasn't included in the second one. So was that going to be done before the original hot dog? We don't have a certificate of liability for this one. We have to have it. They'd have to give it to us. He's here. Yeah, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't put the it insurance in there. It just said that. You must have it, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it said you'd request it after. So, why? I There should be numbers there for. There was lines on those forms for the trench paving. Issue. Yes, there is. You, you do you have the trench. You have the trench okay. paving in yours. Okay. The other one just has zero, so we, I just don't know how to compare these, we don't know, we don't want to like run to the lowest bid if the French payment was supposed to be in it. And, we're try and I didn't see how it went out. I didn't see the original. Well, we need, yeah, we need, we're going to have to table it till we learn. I don't know if we can table it because they need to not. Okay, then we need to. I can get Annalise on Gillis, the phone. can I look at the, um, yeah. the document going after bid ask, see what it asked for? Did, did it ask for that? Well, the first round didn't and then the addendum, it, it did. There, so we went out twice, we had an addendum to the door. I don't know how it went out the second time, but I called because like, I've done this a lot and I said, how are you going to pay it in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so I'm assuming the way... Huge expense. The way it is, 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 is
that so we're going to throw out the twice the bid. It went out with an addendum to cover the pavement. Yeah. So it went out once and then again. Yep. And that's the new one. And why did that happen? Because because, because DOT thinks it's going to be done before. Right. I don't have the cell phone for any of these. So, so he, know, must, he, he must not have seen the addendum. Oh, so that's I the, emailed it to him directly. Okay, he did see the addendum. So, so everybody that was... I have Brian's phone number. Did we call him? Well, I think so. We call him and say we don't have a line item for trench, for trench pavement. In. Well, I guess it's the question is, did he see the addendum? You know, did he, did he still submit me with the addendum requirement? Well, he's got zero for trench pavement. Brian, we're in the Sletman's meeting. They've just opened your uh, bid. They've got some questions. Are you ready for it? Kind of. I thought I might be able to lay my hands on the bed, but I got to So, go Well, ahead. basically, the question is this. You have nothing in the line item for trench pavement. Did you see the revised uh, request for proposal with the addendum saying that the DOT might have paved, done the pavement already? Yeah, I understand that. So, I, did you I, include the trench pavement in your, um, in your bid? It's in your traffic control? Yep, and I zeroed it out. I wanted to put it in the lump sum, and that's the way I like to do things. Okay, but is there anywhere where we can be assured that that's in fact? Well, that's what the bid actually says. That's, that's the entire bid. I zeroed it, and I put it in the traffic control, so you are safe. You're, you know you're going to get payment. You're just getting it for zero dollars. Okay. All righty. So we have to see the difference in the traffic Yes. Okay. All righty then. And that's uh, for either the 24 or the 10. Yes, ma'am. Okay then. Thank you very much. We're going to hold you to that. We have a whole bunch of people here that heard that. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll let you know. Okay, well, one is 103 and one is 127, so that's the. Hmm? And the other one is 51 and 54. So. I do. Do I see them? Do you see them? No, I don't. It's just, you heard what he said. Yeah. yeah. Much more. And what is the difference between those two lines on that one bid for the. Traffic control on the one that well, um, one uh, construction has at at fourteen thousand four hundred, and um, Donovan construction has it for forty three thousand. And then what is um, the pavement on that one? Do the two I mean, are they comparable in price? If you put the, the forty three thousand well, on the other one that has it broken down, do they sum up about around? Well, the one's one twenty seven and one's one oh three. So it's much, we have yeah. to take a lower bid. Yeah. 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 As long as it included the trash right. pavement. Right. We good? Yeah, well, who wants to make a motion? I make a motion we do, we do the lesser uh, bid. Of 103. Of 103. Mm -hmm. I have a second. All in favor? Well, which one was that? No public discussion. We're done. Discussion. What are we going to discuss? We have to take the lower bid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Barbara. I, I know. I know. We would say on Barbara. Okay. I think we kind of had a discussion before that. We just called him. Probably oh. we should have waited for the discussion, the motion and the discussion. But we didn't know to take the lower bid until we knew it was the lower bid. Because we weren't sure he was going to add the trench pavement on top of what he submitted you, since it was zeroed out. Are you going to write out a contract for him? Because that's where you include the trench pavement. 
Just make a short thing there. Yes, of course. Of course. Thank um, you. Of course, we're going to make Thank sure. Thank you so much, Carol. Have yes, a good of you. Well, now, but I will open the whole thing up to public comment. Can I ask a dumb question? Yes. No. <laughs> Do you always have to accept the lower bid? Is that how it works? Pretty much. Pretty much. All bids? Pretty much, unless it's uh, unless you have uh, uh, unless it's an en engineering. Yeah. Well, if you have engineering involved, uh, then they can sometimes have to take a different bid because of their <coughs> qualification. Their qualifications. So there, they have we have to uh, defer to the suggestions of the engineers when we don't have an engineer in this project. It's just manhole project. Yeah. yeah, what was that? Can you read off some of these numbers? Can I get those? Yes. Um, for the 24, he had uh, 43,000 for traffic control and located in a dust frame and covered debris, 2,500 per um, manhole coverage, the total 60,000. On the 10, he had 26 for 26,000 for traffic control and the same 2,500. Or which is total twenty five thousand for the uh, manhole cover. Okay. That's the company that replaced our impound tanks at the wastewater treatment. Oh really? Yeah, we worked. So we have history there. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yes, Barbara. I just wanted to voice once again my uh, concern that you may want to consider lowest responsible bidder, and I. But checking with legal, but I think you have the authority to do that. And and I, because I don't, I am opinionated about calling one contractor for an explanation, um, and and not just what the bid, what they submit is what it is, and not a discussion. But I know that we try to be fair to everybody. But lowest responsible bidder would help you with these low bids that may not be reasonable. Yes, well, I guess Renee just said that he's been yeah, working with the yeah. sewer treatment plant. So, okay. And that is with an engineer. And I think the engineer Indigenous. is the one that puts this bid out for us, actually. They, they're the ones and that does the whole bid packet. Because they can come in very under bid, but not be responsible, you know, for what the need is. Well, the engineer, the engineer for the sewer treatment plant, the one who's spending quite a bit of money to manage a $5 million project, they're the ones that did the RFP. So we didn't, we didn't write the RFP. I don't think I could write an RFP on sewer any of that. No. But your point is well taken, Barbara. I just have a question. I mean, what happened in this case to this person? I don't know even how to part of it. But the low bidder, what if so what if they're getting into the project and they basically can't complete it for the number that they agreed to do at least then it's a easy thing to do. Could you talk a little I, louder? I'm yes. just asking sorry. what happens if the low bidder can't actually complete the project for the number that they need? You just don't think so. Well they just have, they have to submit uh, insurance covering that. A bond, they have like a bond or they, something they that covers what they the bigger projects gonna, they have to have a bond, yes. So this is a done deal. That number, whatever it is, they're going to do the whole project done. And well, no they can back submit a change money. order, but it has to be approved by. by I mean, they can they can try to submit a change order, but it's going it would be up to, to oh, the, 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 ra the rationale. Well, I actually, I'm in the construction business, mm -hmm. building homes, not mm -hmm. that these people do. Mm -hmm. But I just know how things roll, and a lot of times a person who's underbids or whatever really isn't the best qualified person, um, that is, is a way to get a job, mm -hmm. and then you look forward to change orders or whatever, you put the person in a position that they have to basically give you what you want or their job is incomplete. So, well, uh, they've worked for us. It's all laid out all here. Work. It's, they're, it's an extensive yeah. RFP. Well, they're agreeing to that, and they're paying us to pay I'm just yeah. really asking. I, I yeah, it says right here the work covered yeah, what work they have that. to do. Yeah. And it was pretty much managed by our um, Alder, Alder Associates, which is a, a statewide sewer treatment designer, and they're the ones that help us because it was 
I mean, it's it's kind of cut and dry what the what the job really entails. So, but I mean, it would have actually been better if he may have put it so that both bidders addressed it the same way rather yeah. than just uh, so I agree. doing it the way that he put the price. Mm -hmm. So should we? The next thing on the agenda is the Lubeck Dock policy. And so we have been having passenger vessels pick up and deliver passengers on the town dock behind the old marina building. And when the ferry was there, we insisted that the Harbor Board, I, I should say, insisted that they give us their insurance so that they went because they had that big, huge wooden boat. If they ran into mm -hmm. the dock or whatever, that it was insured, and they were insured for all, also for people kind of getting on and off the boat. Mm -hmm. So we have last year we had Victor's boat, the Tarquin, and they are giving us their insurance. Now the Quadi the Quadi Dam offered us, or we asked them for a donation. They gave us five hundred dollars for maintenance. We did not ask the Tarquin for that because they started mid-season and they were local residents and the, the ferry was out of, port, uh, out of Eastport. So I just want people to know that we also have a um, water taxi being run in and out of the town dock and it's very important that all these boats, of course the Lorna Jean has always had insurance on the, on the building and on the boat for nine years, however long we've been there. We have to, it's part of our lease to cover major insurance. But um, I was concerned about the water taxi because it's just a little skiff and I was like, we really need to have insurance as well because being in a town and then when you're running on a schedule, you really, it's different than mm -hmm. picking some up with, like if you have a recreational boat and you pick your friends up, that's, that's different. If you're running an actual passenger vessel business, you really need to have insurance and covered because the town doesn't want to be liable for somebody getting on and off somebody's boat. It's so he did give us insurance as well. Okay. So everybody that's running a boat with passengers is insured on, on the dock. And, but I'm, I'd like to ask the Harbor Board to firm up that, to make it a policy. Yeah. They voted on it in a meeting and it's in meeting notes, but I think and we may suggest that it seems like that should 
to the apology. So I make yeah. the motion that we ask the Harbor Board to firm up a policy like that and come up with some kind yeah. of reasonable fee. I would second, yeah. Please. All, all in favor? So then. I think I know something. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the liaison to yeah. bring that to the Harbor Board? Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. Thank you. County Soul Fish. Oh, do public comment on that? Well, so I just, I really have any problems here, but that's not you, that's me. Uh, so what you're saying is that people who don't have insurance are dropping passengers off at our pier. So if they were injured, the town could have a liability, and you want to make sure they have insurance. Is, is that under personnel policy? Or mm -hmm. not personnel? Pardon? You're talking on a commercial basis, not the right. well, I bring my boat no, around. No, I was trying to figure out where you were on the agenda, and I thought the next item was it's personal. Where oh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. That dock policy, number oh, five. Oh, sorry. Okay. I don't know. We're not. We're only, we're only on five. Okay. You have to watch out. We're going to ask questions later. <laughs> Six. <laughs> now see if you got it. Yeah. Yeah, there will be a quiz. Oh, 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 there will be a quiz on this. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just surprised that people can run passenger vehicles on, sh on the sea without proper insurance. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Well, guess what? They're all, they are all the all they the policies are here. They <laughs> might have it. We just right. haven't said we have yeah, everything else to yeah. require it. I Purchase. yeah, I, I had to ask the ferry, uh, not the ferry, I had to ask the new person that's running the water taxi because this is the first year he's used that dock. Any <laughs> boat, any passenger vessel that has been using that dock, I have or the harbor board or I have gone and said the harbor board needs some your insurance policy. Yeah. And we've always had the insurance policy of everybody. That's it's just this is a, this is a new boat. But I think it should be in a policy mm -hmm. that if you're going to run on yeah. a regular basis and drop off and pick up passengers on a dock that we own, and that's the a town owns, liability. Yeah, that's a big liability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, anyway. so we do, we do have that. We just we're just asking for a policy. County salt fish. We have the salt fish. There's this more is fish just, uh, going in with the county mm -hmm. every year. We go in with the county and they okay. put it up to bid and get a, a good, better rate for us. Okay, so two. We want 200 tons of yep. salt. Is that what we got last year? Yep. Okay. Do you yeah. need a motion for that? Yeah, because you guys have to sign up. Motion sent the county salt to be added. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Do you know what it is yet or no? 200 tons, it says here. No, oh, what the price is? Yeah. No. So are you taking notes? Are you taking notes? Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're tabling the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance. You might An individual asked to be put on there, but I don't see him in the audience. No children, children. Fourth and County budget updated focus. That is. Oh, I do. Do you know anything about that? Well, what's what? what oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. The person yeah. who has to be on the meeting. He's not here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I can give it. you an update on the meeting because I was there. Yeah. No, and I saw the note that they're. No, I just. That it's. I missed that. That's just the regular updated ordinance of that's required by the state is going to be going to town meeting and copies will go out when the warrant goes out but they are not as as it was suggested requesting for the setback to go to 100 feet it's staying at 75 feet i can say that they voted on that yeah okay so um we got notification as we do every year for the different districts and the caucus for the uh, Washington County Bus Budget Committee. Um, so they asked us to post this in our lobby, which I did. Um, my term wasn't up yet because I'm on that for the town. You guys will, should designate somebody to, to be included on that in that process. Uh, but it will be by your appointment and they will carry out my term. My term wasn't up this year, but they'll just carry out my term. So this is um, that. Suzette. <laughs> uh, also, they had a no, they reconvened no, no. they reconvened the budget committee 
which I had in six years that I've been on it, I don't remember them ever doing. And that's this is to do with the um, the state police reducing and removing their rural patrol. They are still in Washington County offering the special like uh, special ops and such like that, but they will not be doing rural patrol, which has caused the sheriff to um, hire an additional deputy from the current budget that he is in. And in January, they're going, well, they'll be requesting that in January to hire two more additional deputies because they will be responsible for all three slots of Washington County. And so I, I bring this up here because your representative is not just a representative of Lubeck. Your representative is a representative of District 2, which is uh, Chris Gardner's district. So it's important that if the public feels strongly one way or the other, for or against, you should let your representative know. And that individual is from the town. And it can be a selection or you may want it to do it. Right. You have three uh, representatives from, from District 2. You have Eastport, Lubeck, and Machias that is a voting member of the Washington County Budget Committee. Um, and who can Chris Chris Gardner. Gardner. No, it goes by it yeah. goes by like population of right. the town, so that's why you. Have but a is it the select board that that uh, that uh, appoints the? Because we appointed you. I I be, well, John Sutherland was before me, and so they kind of just kept whoever is the paid staff, <laughs> you know, to go to go. But if you choose somebody else, that you said some of them are select. Who was you sat on the budget committee? Did you uh, have the um, selectman on one? Yes, John Sport as okay. representative is a selectman. And the rest of them on the, the rest of them, uh, Matthias is their their co their CFO, the, the chief financial officer. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, town clerk of Jonesboro comes. So, oh, okay. he ha you know, some towns don't have town managers. So, but so Eastport be sends their city town manager. Clerk, it could be the clerk, it could be the treasurer, it could be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so whoever you choose. But it's this we vote or it's the selection that appoints the person. Well, I would have the selectmen choose because it, it is a representative of Lubeck, somebody, one of your officials. But it has to be like uh, either the CFO or the treasurer or the town administrator or one of the selectmen. Yeah. Okay. So we'll put that on the next agenda. Okay, mm -hmm. guys. I can't think of Yeah, they'll be uh, starting the meetings, I believe, um, the end of August. The election. Yeah, <laughs> I think it should be the but first the meeting after August. <laughs> yeah, that's you, a good idea. You want your person to vote for the two more additional deputies that will be re that when they'll be the requesting. Meeting? It'll be announced. It's okay. usually in the fall. But oh, okay, yeah, so we can so we can wait yeah, for the first time. But we can wait till August when we do all the other appointments. Yeah. Okay. And caucus is it's here. It's, it's in your packet and it's posted. Okay. Um, so, personnel policy, we, we have, um, <laughs> so, I got your attention, we're yeah. all supporting the papers. So, there's been a request that we act, uh, do some kind of, what would you say, reward long service to the town, in this case it would be four years of continued service to the town that they would be, uh, that we would then uh, pick up their um, health insurance. Because... Dependent on family health. Ooh. Well, they all, we already take care of their yeah. insurance, right. but the right. additional, because right. like right now, the new employees, the rule is, and it will stay that way, that you that the town pays for the employee and half of the family or child benefits. But it, it's coming down to over $350 every two weeks. And when you're making $17 an hour, $350 every two weeks is you have more than half your salary. Okay. It's really a cost prohibitive. And we've, um, we, I've, I feel that it's that we want we yeah. want people to stay here. We don't want them to have to leave because they can make more money at McDonald's or Burger King or Dunkin' Donuts. And 
I just feel that this yeah. is really, it's up to the select board to create the personnel policy. And we are allowed to, we, should um, update it. we can add a benefit yeah. to, and to that. And if we have someone work that long, I think yeah. it would be. They've proven their loyalty and commitment. So uh, I'll make a motion that we update the uh, personnel policy to include a, the additional benefit to be paid by the town after four years of continued service. Um, I'll second. Discussion? Now we should have a discussion. There seems to be some from the audience. Oh, okay uh -oh. then. Martha, uh-oh, it's the chair of the budget committee. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not the chair. Oh, no. <laughs> just a member. Oh, that's Denise. Denise is the chair. Oh, that's right. I guess um, but sense. my question is, um, you just cost the town more money? And the budget's done, and that the budget's what we're proposing to. Well, you know, have? actually, it's going to be less money for the admin. You should have gotten the. Um, we got the adjusted. We got the adjusted because of the change. The changes in salary. The, but one of the new full-time one of the full-time employees does not need benefits, so the money is out of benefit out, out of the benefit line. It's actually the total is less. The salaries are less. And the total is less. But does this put it back up some? No, it makes it less than what we said. What you what you approved to approve approved of is less. I can show you the paper. We we didn't see that one. Okay. Just checking. I'm glad you're <laughs> here checking, Martha. <laughs> the bottom line of admin will actually be less than what you approved of. Okay. The budget committee approved of. We made sure that that was All right. the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, so no, my, my comment piggybacks on that. I think it would have been helpful for the town and people paying taxes to know what the amount would be, because I think uh, then we we know when it comes to the time for approving the budget and this town meeting. Also, it's I, been my, put in. It's been requested. We had to change it before town meeting. It was, this is what we were working on for the last few I just days. think it's more transparent. It's going to be, um, all mm -hmm. the new figures are, will be in the warrants. We have them all readjusted, all of okay. the, the, the new titles, everything. We knew, I, 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 I knew that it needed to be transparent. We okay. couldn't wait a whole year, so that's why. I'm glad it was foggy for a week because I had time to work. <laughs> and, and secondly, I don't, everyone, everyone takes an oath of office, so. Well, well, I appreciate that it's loyalty. I don't think we can necessarily say it's loyalty. I think we say for recruitment and retention purposes, that justifies what you have to do in order to get the quality personnel. But loyalty is something, you know, that we expect to give an oath of office. Certainly, it's been an ongoing battle, just not with loyalty, just with Retention and common recruiting. sense of retention, mm -hmm. and that's right. even two or three and years ago, I'm embarrassed to, to say that some of the salaries and hourly wages were incrementally. We've been trying to do as best we can while maintaining that and getting people. Uh, Absolutely. I you just throw in there that um, I think that for retention purposes of employees, it can be good. I would um, yeah, remind everybody it was I don't know four years ago, five years ago that. Budget committee and the select board did the whole readjustment to personnel and the insurance because of the scary increase to our insurance line every year around personnel and insurance. And you know, for many years, people worked for towns and probably made less money than private industry because they had great insurance. <laughs> you know, um, and we're facing that dilemma again now that you know we have employees that are working for sometimes less than they can make at McDonald's or someplace. And the enticement of insurance is important. Um, and recognizing, having been on that budget committee when we looked at the cost of insurance and figuring out somehow to not have that line increasing in perpetuity, you know, for tax purposes, um, we came up with that policy that we pay for employees and we would pay half the cost of family and then employees would have to pick up that cost. I think at this stage, um, probably makes sense. Because um, you know, last year we did um, some increases to salary to a few employees because they were so below the mark that you know anybody would not have blamed them at that time, and everybody was making more money anywhere. 
and I think now it kind of makes sense to look at, you know, what what can we do as a town that's going to help? The insurance line, we've been fortunate. Some years, you know, it's 8%, some years it's 12%, some years it's 22%, you know, many years, yeah, some years it's 2 2%. Our, right, right. Our insurance line runs well, you know, for, for what we that's dish right. out in insurances. We can um, assume this benefit at four years of employment with the town to be able to offer that relief to employees because at the going rate of what we would have to give in raises, you know, we couldn't be competitive at that stage. So uh, giving this, I think, is a good incentive. Mm -hmm. So know. we didn't vote yet, did we? No, it's still, still discussion. discussion. And the reason I'd like to see the numbers, I'm thinking of three years, since we're talking about.